Using the new Hero 11 Black Mini to record my trip. See if it's any different, any better. And uh, get my nav back on. Have zone. So we go on um, left dash. So we're heading to Jembrook Launching Place Road, which is about nine meter, 900 meters away. I'm feeling more comfortable about riding on the dirt sitting down now. Not so freaked out about the dirt. But I know uh, if something happens, I know how to easily get on my feet, put the weight down like that, and help balance the bike if need be. So that's good. I've got to get more comfortable about riding these edges, coming into these turns, because I've got to anticipate a vehicle from the other side. So, yeah, got to practice that. So now I'm turning left onto Jembrook Launching Place Road. Listening to some country music on the headphones, on the Beats Flex. Yeah, I usually, usually use the um, Hero 5 Session as my camera and the wind resistance on, and I mount it on top of the helmet and the wind resistance is typically low. Now I'm, now I've got uh, the Hero, what is it? No, the GoPro 11 Mini got the 11 mini now and that's mounted and the wind resistance doesn't seem much different it's only a fraction wider the mini than the session so it doesn't feel much different as far as uh, wind resistance goes so I'm turning in 5k is like it's funny about that it actually feels better than the than the Hero 5 Session or it's about the same uh, nah it's about the same same kind of pull which is only slight Only 
slight. Heading for Lusatia Park Road. Lusatia Park Road. Actually, I should put this on um, my camera, camera control, just so I can see the time that the camera's on. There you go, pro sessions go for about 17 minutes before they cut off, before they uh, break up the video. 17 minute lots, 17 and a half thereabouts. Do my jack up a bit. I was thinking of getting a bigger road bike, but um, I don't like being stressed out too much, and I think that's why I like the GSA. It's got the big tank distance, so I'm not never stressed about use, losing fuel. It's got the great suspension that I can go over anything. There's no gutter or rock or anything that's going to stop me. <laughs> or occasional dirt road or anything that's not going to stop me. Even some of the um, the forest dead ends not going to stop me. They haven't so far. And uh, so I think I'm actually suited to the GSA so I don't want stress. GSA is stress free. Of course you can put as much stress as you like into it. You can go into really hard places and test yourself. But even I've done that and I've been fine. I haven't had, well, I had stress initially but then I've sort of got over it. If I just pace myself and chillax, um, and don't have any time pressure, Lusatia Park Road, then um, I can go just about anywhere, relax free. And so, and I don't like being where the main traffic is, I like being away from the main traffic. So I'm not stressed by anyone in front of me, behind me, or to the side of me. I've got the road and time to enjoy the scenery as I like. So, I definitely think I'm suited to the GSA. So yeah, if you want stress-free riding, GSA. And uh, right now I'm hanging my legs down. The bike's tall enough. You can set the suspension high enough to hang your legs. Which is great to relax. Um, of course, on a big bike, you can extend your legs out. But you can't hang them. Hanging's different. So I can extend my legs out here too, but hanging's a treat. A special treat. Feels good. You get some cool air going through, through your legs and your feet. Good for hot days. Warmish days. And I can carry pillions um, fairly well on here, like a big bike, like a big road bike. So, comfort wise, not much diff.
So if you're looking for a relaxed, stress-free riding, GSA. Do some training though, because of the it is a big heavy bike. Which is good because you get that stability and presence and stableness on the road. Even in the bush, the big weight and the traction control can get you up places easier than some of those light dirt bikes. The light dirt bikes won't often have traction control, they're a bit too light, they spin out and go all over the place. You can go up some of those climbs better with this or, or downs because of the weight and the traction control and ABS. It's just nice, it, you know, the electronics do it for you, especially going uphill, you just throttle up and the traction will go on and off and spin and not and you'll get up fairly easy without doing much other than holding your throttle and um, keeping your balance, which is also easier on the big bike because it doesn't wobble as uh, willy-nilly as a light bike. It doesn't get thrown around as easy. So, but the only thing I guess that could stress you out is if you're a small, a shorter person and you're stressed about the height but not to worry because uh, you can get a lower uh, seat, a lower frame you can get a lower setup you can get it pretty low almost like a road sports bike you can get it that low so you can get a custom seat made because the actual frame of the seat sits quite low the only thing that makes it high is the the seat you put on it, the frame, you could have a seat made quite low along the frame, you see, and if you're not stashing anything under there, go for it. So, yeah, way better. Heading to Warburton Highway. In the highway. Feeling just a bit peckish now. Would have mind something. programmed into my head when something comes move away and slow down get off the throttle make it a habit you don't want to make it a habit when something comes to swerve and accelerate that's a bad habit when something comes avoid and degas in case things go really haywire You want some good habits, just in case when you get caught in a situation, if you've got a bad habit in place, it could be the wrong habit at the wrong time. I'm trying to chain back into a dynamic Melbourne. I think I need some hydraulic fluid in my clutch. I don't think it's quite pulling in far enough to activate. Stand up, get some fresh air. That's the other great thing about this bike. Stand up, take your hands off, fly like a bird, get some fresh air. It's fairly stable. Feet on the, it's got big wide pegs, feet on the pegs, knees to the seat. Pretty sturdy. Can't brag enough, can I? I um, I was walking past uh, Africa Twin at work the other day, and I don't know. I was looking at the Africa Twin up and down, side, top. Compared to this, Africa Twin makes me puke. It just gives me the creeps. I can just well. Compared to this, when you look at an Africa Twin, I just get the heebie-jeebie creeps, like 
it's just made cheap it doesn't have quality it's just gone cheap like the frame the frame is just a molded piece of steel or something and it looks crappy the, st the frame looks like um, the frame you'd expect to see under a car you know the chassis under the car that's what it looks like it looks like a sh car chassis which on a, a frame that's exposed on a motorbike I think that's yucky creep you know it's not nice like a Ducati frame something like that you know what I mean the Beamer has got sort of like a Ducati frame which gives it some nice aesthetic appeal some thought looks like it's made with some thought as opposed to just moulding a chassis from cheap metal that probably rusts quickly. Do you know what I mean? And some of the other stuff too, just get the impression it. I mean, they even might have cheap materials, but at least I can put it together so it doesn't look cheap. <laughs> That's the trick, right? There's a difference. Alright, I'll bring you back.